that you're here on the show today. Um, you were on the show a couple weeks ago and we had phone technical difficulties. You were in Florida. Yeah. yeah. So of course you had phone difficulties because you know, you know how those people in Florida are. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Great. I'm just jealous because I don't have a beach to hang out at. Okay. Um, so I'm really excited you're here. Your music just dropped. We've been um, playing it uh, quite often, actually. So that's awesome. And I really like Diamond Ring. That's probably my favorite. Yes. Yeah, so of your new music. I love your old music, too. And so let's talk about that. What inspired you in the first place to get into music? Um, my mother. I have it's my mom, hands down. When I, ever since I was a kid, so my father's black, my mother's white, and um, I grew up with my mom. And she used to play acoustic guitar, and she would sing folk music. So she, would, me and my sister Harmony grew up together. That's my youngest, and I was the oldest. So I was really the man of the house. But anyways, before that even happened, like my mom used to just sing us to sleep, like literally every night, and she would play the guitar. And so that, it was it was instilled in me like whenever I hear an acoustic car, guitar like it's like gives me a certain uh, nostalgia. So and I can play a little bit now. I'm not a beast with it, but I play. <laughs> um, and I've always messed with it since I was young. But it's really my mom, hands down. Um, she always had us singing with her, and like it's crazy because I never lived anywhere more than two years at a time. Like we moved around a lot. Like she was you know a struggling single single parent trying to make things happen. Um, sometimes we'd be over here, sometimes we'd be over there, over Washington, Tacoma, Washington is where I was born at, but I was back and forth from Ohio. Um, and so when I'd be at school, like when I, in kindergarten, you know, kindergarten, first grade, they'd have them school, um, like, like concerts. Yeah. <laughs> they would always, and I don't know, my mom must have hooked it up with like whoever the teacher was, because I know I had no parts in it, but they would always have like a part where, it would stop and my mom would come out and she would play the guitar and I would sing with her. And it was all, it was that way since I was, since I can remember, like for like to like third grade. That's and amazing. Legit. Like we'd be singing like Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin and stuff like that. Like <laughs> legit. So I never had like a real fear of performing in front of people or anything like that. I love, I love the underpinnings of your story. So with that, do you sing to your kids like your mom sung to you, like a family tradition? I just love that. I can't imagine you sat in with these like little kids. How old did you say your kids were? Well, my, my youngest is four yeah. and six. And uh, like my, they love to sing. You know, my <laughs> kids sing, so um, it's in them. It's, it's, you know, it's just you know what I mean it's, it's, it's you know, yeah they be like daddy song daddy song chances is their favorite you know oh I mean? they love that chances. good so you're not singing like Winnie the Pooh no no I'm not no. singing other songs I'm that's what I was that. imagining in my head was <laughs> you singing Winnie the Pooh I mean, I've sung like you are my sunshine <laughs> and stuff to my sons <laughs> that's awesome so I love that groundwork and um you were doing some like I call it hip-hop is that what you would define yourself as before yeah I was a okay. uh, Hip hop, and I love your music. I absolutely love your music. Loved your music, and then you came out with this whole country album, and I was like, "What? What's happening?" Um, and so I'm very excited um, to see where this music takes you, um, and I'm excited to hear you play tonight. To be honest with you, so that's super exciting. Um, but I think that it has a lot of. You have just a multifaceted talent where you can switch from hip hop to country and it seems seamless. Like you've been in the country industry forever. Who do you um, aspire or look up to as artist? Um, like right now, like I'm, I've been listening to a lot. I mean, so to, it's always been um, in order to keep my individuality and not really sound like anybody or emulate anybody. I don't really listen to too much. Yeah. I listen to something and be like, oh, I like that. And then I don't, I don't overplay it. I don't learn the words to their songs or stuff <laughs> like that. And, you know, I'm working on getting a booking agent and I'm just getting my team together, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then just hitting the road. Like, I'm, I've already, like, performed in a few, you know, coming to Kentucky and a few spots and um, met some really dope people like Rich Regal and Kelsey Lynn and uh, Six Below and, uh, 
I'm, I just got like a whole bunch of people that are yeah. like, just embracing me in the game right now, and I'm excited about it. So that's awesome. Well, they should be embracing you because you're you're going to go to the top. <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, I I think that people appreciate your transparency, your honesty, and the way that you present yourself as a person. And so that's extremely important because I could have said, oh, I think that you're cute. And you could have been like, I know, I know. <laughs> but you start blushing over here and you're chuckling and telling me, oh, I'm, not, I'm just yeah, a goon. I don't see that. You know, I mean, I, if you see that, you know what I mean? I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I think that I'm not the only one. <laughs> Come on now, people. I know it seems like we're talking to ourselves, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> Say <laughs> so I'm getting thumbs up. Yeah, exactly. So I think um, I think that's amazing. I'm really excited about your journey. Do you have any advice for anyone that is trying to do what you do? Yeah, no, just um, be true to yourself. First and foremost, be true to yourself and understand that it's not um. There's this idea out there that um, if I just make a great song and just throw it out there, that's it's gonna hit the right person and I'm gonna make it. It doesn't work like that. It's a grind. It's a it's work. You know, making the music is, I think, less than five percent of it. You know, what I mean, the rest of it is all the grind and persistence, building relationships, um, and true relationships. You can't um, you can't meet people and be a maggot. You got to be someone that people want to rock with, want to work with, um, and can trust to be on time to be there when um, when you don't feel like being there. Right now, I should be sleeping. Yes. <laughs> you're like, yes. I don't know what about but you know what I mean? It's, it's necessary. <laughs> this is necessary. I, I want this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't care if I haven't slept for three days. I'm going to um, do whatever um, to further myself and my career. So you need to do whatever you need to do the right way. You got to put the work in. It's not, it's not, um, it's not just make it, it's not just about making music and playing like you're, you made it already. There's tons of great artists who have never made it and never been heard that make music. So much great music out there. But it's what um one thing that I about success, and this was taught to me, and when you know this, then you'll stay prepared. The two things that create success, and without one of them, you can't have success. One is preparation, and the other one is opportunity. You can have the opportunity, but if you ain't prepared, you're not going to have success. You can have uh, preparation, but if you don't have the opportunity, you'll never make it. It's when both will create, um, fall together that everything is created. So um, I'm staying prepared and I'm taking every opportunity possible. And I believe that this time next year, I'm going to be getting some awards and stuff and then make things happen. And that's, that's awesome. Um, I well, I think you have a lot of people that uh, believe in you and are lifting you up, and and I definitely know that our studio is one of them. Yeah, so. no, you've been like <laughs> you're the first radio yeah. station to really rock with me, and that and that's big to me because I'm loyalty is everything. Like I said, I have a prison mentality in some things, and those are one of the things is when you can believe in somebody before when you have no reason to really believe in them, like you have no. You're not getting nothing from that. You're putting me in a position of, of a be in a better position. And when you do that without asking for anything, like, yeah. then you want to be, like, when I'm in position, <laughs> I'm returning the favor. Well, like, I appreciate always. that. I do have a question because you've talked about prison a couple times. And we haven't really talked about that before. Did you do anything violent? <laughs> yeah, I was a serial killer. Yeah, see, I was waiting for you to be no, like, I, you no, know, no, I was I, a serial killer. <laughs> I murdered my family. No, what really happened is, and um, it's crazy because the number three song on the album was called Real Fake, and it pretty much tells my story. Um, I was, uh, you know, I've been, I, I came from the streets. I come from nothing. And uh, coming from what I come from, we always, you know, I looked up to my cousins and my my uh, older relatives that were in the streets, you know what I mean? And they was hustling. And so selling drugs was a way for me to, to get things that my mom couldn't afford. And she never allowed that, you know what I mean? She was very religious. And um, yeah. I lied about things, you know what I mean? Friends gave me this, somebody's mom gave me this, you know what I mean? But um, 
you know, I started selling drugs at a, at a young age and it became a way of life for me um, because it, it could provide the things that I needed. And so what happened was um, my cousin and I have, I have uh, two, two brothers and a sister from my dad's um, family he had, but they're my, you know, I don't see half like what yeah. for my brothers and sisters, but um, uh, my younger, one of my, my younger brother and uh, his cousin uh, came to me and, and was, they were in a bad position and, and needed some help. And uh, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to help them in that way, but they needed help. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to put you in position. And uh, then um, my cousin ended up getting jammed up. My, my cousin ended up getting jammed up and um, he told on me. And um, so I, I got pulled over and I had some money on me and like 40 or 2,300 of them. The money was marked money from sales that he had made to an undercover. Oh, no. And so that was circumstantial evidence. And with that circumstantial evidence and him testifying to the grand jury that I was a supplier, then I ended up with the case. It got me eight years for not cooperating with them, so um, I didn't get caught with anything. But, some, some money. but it was a lesson, and it was um, while I was in there, I did a lot. I mean, that's a whole other story. That's a whole felon nation movement and all this. Um, there's a whole bunch that comes from that. But I'm the I'm the musician I am today because of that, and the man that I am today because of that. You know? No, I appreciate that. I think um, you're. I always mess it up. Felonation music group. Yeah. Yes, I said it right. Okay, and um, and that's pretty much the beginning of the story right there. Yeah, that's so, why I'm F1. Yeah, because I had an F1 drug trafficking. That they, makes so they much called sense. Me, they used to call me F1, in there. and it started out as a joke for real. Because dudes is like, "Oh, I got an F3 and I got an F4," and they was like, "What you got?" And I was like, "Mine's an F1." And they was like, "Oh, F1." And, F1. <laughs> and then they just started calling me F. Stuck, so. I like that. I like that, and you own it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're so not I'll like. So I never forget it. Yeah. I'm not go back to it, and I also uh, I got my CDLs too, so I don't never have to go back to that, even if this don't work out. So. Well, that's awesome, and 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 it's good that you've like set up your life so you don't have to do that, um, because a lot of people it it is easy. It's easy to go back into that. So, um, well, I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of where you are, and I'm super excited to see where you're going. Awesome. So thank you for being on the show and thank you for everything that you've done. Um, we're going to keep playing your music and um, jamming. So I think Kitchen is my second favorite after Diamond Ring. Um, so yeah, that's probably the ones that people have to hear the most, but that's because that's what I want to listen to. Yeah, so that's very exciting. Um, so thank you for being on the show and thank you for taking time, even though I know I woke you up when you're supposed to be resting before your show tonight. <laughs> So it's good. Awesome. Perfect. All right. So thank you. This is Bree with BS in the Afternoon on Hits 105.5.